blockchain is like a distributed or decentralized database, um, there is a consensus rule on the network that only specific nodes or specific, um, yeah, like servers in, in the case of proof of stake or miners in the proof of work um, case can write into this blockchain or into this database. And um, if we talk about Bitcoin, for example, all the transactions are summarized in one block and this block comes um, on average every 10 or every 12 minutes. And in this block, every transaction is included. Um, and yeah, I think the biggest advantage of the blockchain is that um, you can save data in a decentralized way, which can't be altered or which can't be manipulated in the future anymore. So you can save values into the blockchain now and you can be sure in like 10 days that this data is still the same as it was 10 days ago. What is the difference between a so-called private blockchain and the Bitcoin blockchain, which I guess you could call public in, in a way so what is the main difference between those types of blockchains? So I think the key difference would be uh, who controls um, the transactions, who control, who verifies the transactions, and who decides which transaction is valid and which isn't. So in the case of, the, of a public chain like Bitcoin, uh, and this is basically what makes Bitcoin so interesting, is the validation is done by a group uh, which is an open group, uh, which is the group of miners. And so everybody who has mining power can participate in the verification of transactions. And so, you know, you can you can decide that the transaction is not valid. If you have enough hashing power, you can use that to decide, you know, to censor a transaction. But overall, the group, you know, has kind of coherent rules, which is like, uh, it's not, you know, it, there's the the uh, the, uh, the outer boundaries of that is the consensus, like the what makes a block valid. But within those boundaries, you can you can decide that you won't accept this transaction, or you you know you, you can do that. So like the the group basically controls the validation of the transactions. In the case of a private chain, the validation would be done by a closed group, or you know either a centralized entity or a closed group of um, of entities that that would trust each other, so this is actually a little bit how Ripple works. You know, like you have you have a chain like um, a web of trust that is established, and um, you you know they validate transactions independently. Um, you can you can have like a consensus between like parties. Uh, you know, I think this may be uh, what uh, Hyperledger was doing. Uh, you have like a, gr a closed group, which trust each other, so you cannot join that group but that group decides which transactions are valid. Um, and I think in terms of the use cases, uh, they're quite quite different actually. So in the case of, uh, of Bitcoin, which is uh, with the open membership type of uh, system, uh, we want to, we basically, um, you know, that group controls a currency that's decentralized, so that currency doesn't have uh, a custodian. So it's not something that's backed by physical goods or you know, by a physical asset or an asset that exists in the real world. Bitcoin is just self self referencing, so there's nothing that uh, you know that there doesn't have to be any kind of reserve existing in the real world for this asset. So it's fine if this open group controls the validation of the transactions. Uh, I think the private chains are more useful in the case where um, you have a physical asset. So I can give you an example. Actually, it would be let's say an example of. Uh, of a company who controls um, uh, a vault containing gold, um, so that that company has you know they issue some currency that's backed by gold, and they have to make sure that whenever they issue uh, one unit of that uh, currency, they have the backing ounce of gold in their reserves. So in that case, it's different because you don't want to leave that to an open group because uh, you're the one who who knows what in the, is in your vault, and you're you know you have to keep that uh, in sync. Uh, so this is kind of two like this is like different um, I think use cases. In the case of Bitcoin, it's decentralized assets, and in the case of the private chain, it's more adapted for uh, assets which have a custodian. <laughs> Good question. Uh, so 
Um, blockchain to me, it's, it's, a, it's a, ledger, a ledger, whether that's um, private or public, as we're seeing, um, where the, the entries in that ledger cannot be really tampered um, and uh, audited in a way that's um, irrefutable and can be proven by anyone that understands code or anyone that can hire someone that understands code. Um, and that, that's my definition of a blockchain from a non-geeky perspective. Uh, from, from a finance perspective, that means you can do things uh, that you just, just couldn't simply do before that required human intervention and regulations and auditors to entrust that they were being honest and had your best intention in order to perform a similar task that the blockchain could do. But this was all performed by mass code algorithm in a way that couldn't be tampers or um, couldn't have any problems. There's, there's a lot of attempts to define what a blockchain is. And you have guys like um, Preston Burr who says, or, and, and Vitalik actually, who says it's just a database. But that's kind of silly to me, like right off the bat, because if it's just a database, A, why all of a sudden are, are all these people interested in databases after the year 2009? Uh, you know, two, why, why even have a word called blockchain then, which is a database? Why not just call it a database? There has to be some differentiating factor between a blockchain and a database. So I asked myself then what, what made Bitcoin different in these terms? And immutability is the answer that I have championed and that I believe. And for a computer programmer, immutability means like this very sacred thing. Like they know, when you say immutability, it's, that's like a real thing. Um, for people who have never heard the term before, it's a little bit abstract to them. But it's roughly this, there are values in the universe that are unchanging and that are constant and that they cannot be mutated. And these are typically things like pi or e or various you know, speed of light perhaps in a vacuum. These are like big heavy concepts. And in computer programming, we've never ever had that before. We've had within a small context, some degree of unchangingness, but it would always depend on prevalence, depend on authority or some kind of collusion or trust relationship you had with the runtime environment. So like typically like your server, like you trust your server. So your server will keep that value constant, but it's not a truth of the universe that keeps that value constant. So when Bitcoin came around, now we had in decentralized terms, immutability being created for the persistence. So that's what sets Bitcoin apart. And certainly what sets blockchains apart is their immutability. Uh, because if, 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 if they're just databases, then who cares? Why are we here? That's, that's what is very obviously being delivered by Bitcoin.